Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server memory upgrades and how to properly install and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL360 Gen 9 server. Uh, if you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor and uh, click the like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Uh, first things first, this is a dual socket uh, or dual CPU socket system. It uses Intel E5 2600 V3 or V4 series CPU, which is an LGA 2011-3 socket. Uh, this is the next gen from a very popular system, the uh, DL. 360p Gen 8, um, and this moves on from uh, DDR3 all the way to DDR4 memory. And on that note, uh, it takes DDR4 memory, and there are 24 DIMM slots inside. There are a number of different sizes you can use, and that is very key to which type of memory you're going to use, which we'll get to into a second. But you can use uh, 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, uh, 32 gig on the ECC register side, and you can use 64 gig and all the way up to 128 gig on the load reduced side, which we'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. As far as the speeds are concerned, you can use a bunch of different speeds. You can use uh, 2133 megahertz, you can use 2400 megahertz, you can use 2666 megahertz, and technically if you wanted to put in uh, 2933, it'll just clock back down, but you could use those as well. Um, so uh, on that note, let's uh, open it up. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about the insides. Um, actually, before we open it up, um, let's talk about the two types of memory that you can use. You can um, use ECC registered, also known as RDIM, uh, and you can use uh, load reduced memory known as LRDIM. Uh, and this is really, really key and really, really important as far as which type of, of uh, RAM you're using because uh, the max for uh, ECC registered is four times less than the max for load reduced, which is quite a big difference when you really, really think about it. So the max for uh, ECC registered is going to be uh, 24 32 gigs whereas the max for uh, load reduced is going to be 24 128 gigabytes and really that's I mean that's just a massive difference overall so for that reason we when customers ask us hey you know what should we use we personally recommend load reduced modules even if you're not fully maxing it out uh, because let's just say you want to add some more memory to it six months down the line a year down the line two years down the line um, you have to use the same type of uh, RAM you can't mix load reduced and ECC registered so if you already have ECC registered in there and then you need to, to get it to a higher scalability then you pretty much have to get rid of your ECC registered you can't add them uh, to the next thing that you're upgrading with. So that's why we recommend load reduce. But anyhow, uh, we'll go ahead and open it up. Um, I want to show you the memory channels inside. I want to show you how to properly load and configure it. Uh, but before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear because really whenever you're inside the machine, you want to make sure you're wearing ESD gear so you don't shock it. So I'll be right back. All right, we are back with our ESD gear on so we're safe to open the machine. So first things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Pop it open and lift the top up, pretty much like any machine you've ever really been in. Um, one of the things that's nice about the uh, 360 Gen 9 as a whole, uh, there's not a whole lot uh, on top of it. I don't have to remove air baffles. I don't have to take the fans out of the way. Basically, there's just great access to the CPUs and the RAM without having to, to do a whole lot of work, which is always very nice. Um, so we would kind of talked about it a little bit. There are two CPUs. Uh, this is CPU 1. CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. Um, this is very important. So if you only had one CPU, for instance, you need to make sure you install it on this side. And you can only use the uh, uh, RAM on this side because they just physically wouldn't register if you only had one CPU. Uh, we hear that question every once in a while. Someone will be like, hey, um, you know, they basically have tried to max it out with only one CPU and it, it just won't work, obviously. So um, what we're going to do today is actually going to load this up uh, to the max of uh, for registered because this customer actually wants ECC registered even though we try to talk him into LRDIMS uh, he wanted ECC registered um, and we're going to put in uh, 768 gigabytes which would be the 2432 gigs uh, whereas you know you can do three TBs if you were ever wanting to do load reduce so uh, anyhow uh, for CPU one uh, there are uh, 12 DIMM slots there are four memory channels per CPU and there are three DIMMs per memory channel. Um, and this is important for uh, a number of different reasons, but most importantly as far as how to actually configure it. So the start of each channel is the white DIMM slot. So this is gonna be uh, channel one, first slot, channel two, first slot, channel three, first slot, channel four, first slot. Now over here, it's gonna flip flop a little bit um, and your first channel is actually gonna be right here. I'm sorry, right here and then your second channel is right here. So it'll go uh, one and then two, and then you're gonna come back over to this side, and then you're gonna go on the outside, and it's gonna be three, 
and then four. So if you were only going to put in, let's just say, um, eight memory modules with two CPUs, you would load them in all the white DIMM slots. That's the start of the channel. People ask us, why do we only do the, uh, put them into the white slots? Uh, it's a real simple question. It's about maximizing your performance. You want to have a good balance um, across all of your channels. Otherwise, one channel is managing too much of the load. If you have just a nice even distribution, then you're not overloading one and you're getting the most out of all of your channels. Uh, so, on that note, we're going to go ahead and actually start putting some of the modules in. Uh, before we start loading these 32 gigs, one thing I would like to note right here you'll see this notch which is known as a key on the module this key is very important because if you uh, flip the module the wrong way it's not dead in the middle uh, it's not dead center so if you flip it the wrong way you could end up loading the module the wrong way you could damage uh, the dim slot itself you could damage the module itself and, and DDR4 modules aren't cheap so you definitely don't want to damage the module but a, but a motherboard inside is actually even more expensive so you don't want to damage the module uh, the motherboard either so Basically, you just want to be really careful uh, with how you load it. It's a very simple mistake. I actually just did a video a minute ago for the uh, the Dell M620, which is a Blade server, and I, I loaded it the wrong way. Been doing this 20 years, and I you know still make that mistake every once in a while, even while being careful. So I always stress that point to people that you know whether you've been doing it for 20 years or you've been you know it's your first day on the job, it's an easy mistake. So just pay attention to that key and note that it does flip flop from side to side. So uh, depending on which side you're loading it on, actually the, the, the key is on a different spot. So anyhow, we're going to start the start of the channel over here. Uh, we're going to make sure we have it loaded correctly, which is actually this way. And I want to also note when you put the module in, okay, the module is physically in. I'm not holding the module up, but this is an error that we hear all the time, unfortunately. A customer will think that they have a bad dim. And really the dim is not bad, it's that the module is not fully seated. So you want to hear this click right here. So listen for this click. That wasn't a very loud click, but then there's another click on this side. So those two clicks, uh, basically the tab right here that you see that's when it's down, it will push into place and it'll lock onto the, the side of the module. And actually one of the things I always like to do is I personally like to uh, move all these tabs open before I get going. Uh, just makes it a lot easier as I'm going so I'm not doing it each individual time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of preset everything up to make it easier for me and get all these uh, popped open. So uh, we're gonna do it again. Uh, I'm gonna sh want you to listen for it. Maybe this time it'll be a little bit louder. The newer systems are actually a little bit better so they're kind of quieter. But you'll hear this little click. And it's just that simple. When you hear those little clicks, that's how you know the module is fully seated. And again, just being safe and always telling people just some of the little things that happen that can cause some errors. So we're going to go ahead and hit that fast forward. We're going to load all these up right now. So would like to note that it did flip, the key flip. So you have to just, again, be careful and make sure that you are having it face the correct way. And you'll also note I didn't start with the start of the channel because I'm maxing it out completely. Um, sometimes I'll start on the inside right next to the heat sink and then kind of work my way to the middle because when you get to the end it's a little tight fit. Uh, so sometimes I'll do some little tricks like that just to make it uh, make life a little bit easier. And again the key is going to flip back on this side so it just keeps moving just to throw a little, a little tr uh, trouble your way. So just little things to pay attention to as you're going to just make sure you don't accidentally damage a module or damage a motherboard. So just like that, in real time that takes, you know, two to three minutes, you know, five minutes max, and you can safely load all these uh, it's really it's easy like I said it's kind of pay attention to where the keys is at uh, line them up and and really anyone could do it it's not hard at all um, one thing that I, I would note is that I always like to do at the end uh, because again seating the module is one of the most common errors that we see out there um, I like to check my tabs on the back um, at the very end and just make sure every once in a while one will be just kind of sticking out a little bit and then I'll notice that hey the module is not fully seated so all these are good to go and everything is perfect so we are going to go ahead and put our top back on and we're going to 
close the latch and boom, just like that, we have officially, uh, as far as ECC Reg is concerned, maxed out the uh, DL uh, or the HP ProLiant DL360 Gen 9. So if you have any uh, upgrades that you need on your side, uh, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Uh, we have a bunch of DDR4 modules in stock right now, and we'd love to quote you on your upgrades. And hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor, click that uh, like button and smash the subscribe. Thanks for stopping by and have a great day.